one thing I wanted to ask you is you mentioned it earlier. You did a little bit of work on the AFL game. You're referring to AFL Evolution 2? Correct. Uh, yeah, and cool. the first one as well. Cool. Uh, what exactly did that entail? What was your involvement? Um, so the first game, I did some testing really late in the piece. And pretty much the only main thing I did was like the trailer for the first one. Um, Cause it was, it was like really late in development. So there wasn't a heap that could have been changed. And then they said, Hey, do you want to come back and do the next one? Um, we'll give you a bigger role this time. And I was like, yep, sure. Sounds great. Um, Cause I, you know, I'm super passionate about it. I was like, I really want to make this game really good. So I came in. First thing they said was, Hey, Dennis committee is no longer commentating. Anthony Hudson is the new commentator. Uh, there was like three choices for the color commentator. And I was like, I want Gary Lyon. And I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite everything. So I, I read the whole script for the game. There was like, I don't know, 10,000 lines or whatever that I changed pretty much all of them to suit Hutto's commentary style. I watched like four or five games of football and wrote down every single word that was said and then like categorized everything. Like it was a shitload of work. It took me three months to do the whole script. Um, and then we spent another like, two months of recording sessions with Hutto. Like he was an absolute trooper. They were long grueling sessions and he was so good. Um, like he would sometimes lose it, lose it a little bit in the, the box. Cause he was just like over it, but he was so good. Um, and his performance is fantastic as well. So mostly the commentary was like the main thing. And then the other part of it was like, once that was out of the way, it was like, all right, let's really get stuck into how this game's going to work and play. So um, spent a lot of time looking at like behind the goals vision with some of the programmers because they m might not have seen the sport as much. Um, and then it was really just like articulating how the game should be played. So the whole thing's been like stripped back and we worked on a lot of it. Um, we had people from the AFL come in and be super helpful as well. So it's like a whole new thing, but it was so good for me to be able to go like this needs to change and then it would be able to get changed because I'm wow. like, this is something that I actually wanted to be really good. And when the game comes out, possibly on Friday, um, hopefully everyone else can see how much we've actually put in and done on this game. That's awesome, mate. You're kind of partially sort of living a childhood dream for me. I remember myself and I'm sure there are other young Aussie rules fans when they were younger. I really wanted to be involved in making an amazing AFL game. Um, I had no idea that the commentary took quite so long. I guess I would have guessed, you know, that it would be a little bit brutal, but did you say 10,000 or did I just play? So there's, I think there's 10,000 lines, like individual wow. lines. I know we spent 40 hours in the booth, um, just with Hutto. Gary was a bit easier cause, um, I rewrote how that whole thing worked as well. So it made more sense to someone like, cause I think it, pro like it had probably previously been written by like a programmer who just been yeah. like. Uh, like they just had all the categories and stuff, but they hadn't necessarily worked out how it would all flow. Sure. So I just like s stripped everything back because as someone who commentates as well, yeah. I like knew what I was doing and I was like, all right, when he says this, this guy should also come in and say this because that wow. makes sense. So it's not perfect, but it's much better than it ever has been. So, Oh, that's good. That's reassuring. I mean, at the end of the day for an AFL game, I don't think people really need to get uptight about the commentary. You know what I mean? Like, I, as long as it's a good football game. Um, like I said, like, this has been a bit of a childhood... Well, that is kind of a childhood dream for me. What's it been like for you to being on that? Was it kind of um, almost a dream come true or is that putting it a bit too thick? I mean, it's just, like, work at the end of the day. Yeah, um, okay. So, like, obviously, yeah, like, super cool experience to be able to be involved. I'm... I'm more keen to see when it comes out um, how everyone else reacts yes. because that's when the proof's really in the pudding. Like you can think everything's great, but if other people are like, this is still really bad, then you're like, ah, oh, shit, like I should have done this. I should have done this. Um, you know, so we're all, like almost there. Um, so that's probably when I'll feel more of the good vibes about it yes but it was still really fun it's still a super fun experience good people to work with and i think we made something really cool oh that's really good to hear what um i guess would you say it's probably given you a really good appreciation of how hard it is to get a game right oh yeah 
Like, I see so much crap online. Like, there's always yeah. negative comments. I mean, the AFL Facebook page in general, there's no, like, they don't ever have a good post. There's yeah. always some cynical prick in the comments section ranting about, oh, like, Carlton should win the spoon or something. I don't know. They're always going off about something. So uh, it didn't surprise me when people started criticising it last week. But I think it's sort of turned the corner today, which was pretty good. So, um, yeah, it's re- it's really difficult. Things that people think might be an easy fix are generally not. They're yes. generally the harder things to fix. And... Um, yeah, it's a lot of time that just takes to get things right sometimes. Like, if I'll be like, oh, I just want to do this, it doesn't seem like it's too hard. And they're like, oh, well, we actually need graphics, UI, we need this, we need this, we need this. And then you need a database to have all this other information in. And I'm like, yep, okay, that's not happening. So um, you have to take the little wins. And um, I've definitely snuck multiple things into the game without asking because I was like, if I ask for it, it's not going to happen. So I'm just going to tell someone to do it. And if they do it, fantastic. So. <laughs> oh, that's cool, mate. I, um, I always laugh looking at sort of, you know, I'm sure you've read plenty of them, like AFL game wish lists and how ridiculous they get in terms of like, even some... I read the FIFA ones as well, but some people are just like, I want to be in umpire mode. And it's like, how many times, realistically, are you going to play be in umpire mode? <laughs> like, people don't have... I, I even saw a comment, something like, um, on one of my vids recently, because I made a reaction to the trailer vid, and someone put, I'll, I'll only buy it when it's when it's as good as EA or 2K. And it's like, well, you probably got to lower your expectations a little. How big actually is the team working on this game? Because I think I read a comparison, I think when it was Big Ant, they said they had a team of about 45 people. And then you compare that to EA who had like like over a thousand. I don't know if that's completely accurate, but you can imagine the there's a huge gap. Is it a fairly intimate sort of team working on the game? Well, yeah, like EA have a... Um... I think they have like a whole floor just dedicated to audio. So wow. just put everything into perspective. Um, yeah, I think that probably makes sense. Like somewhere around the f- like 40 to 60 people mark. Yeah. Um, because obviously not everyone in the office is working on the same thing. Like everyone's got different projects. So sure. um, there's probably always constantly like 15 to 20 people working on it at any given time. Because everyone's got their own role. Not everyone is a programmer. You know, there's artists, there's, like, testing people, QA, um, and then people like me who are just, you know, I don't really have a role. I just do everything that needs to be done. So, um, yeah, like, it is a pretty pretty tight group. And then, yeah, so you get to know what people are sort of doing. Yeah, that's cool. Are you fairly? I, I think you said you you feel like you've produced something pretty cool with AFL Evolution too. In general, are you pretty optimistic about the way the AFL gaming sort of movement is trending? Because there was a time where, um, obviously, after AFL 07 or whatever it was, then we didn't get a lot until AFL Live with Big Ant. And personally, I felt that was my favourite, uh, the Big Ant one. Um, and I thought, gee, if we get them going on a few different releases and sort of build up a bit of a budget and we don't have to start from scratch every time, um, we could actually build something cool. Wicked Witch now has uh, a second rendition. Are you fairly optimistic about where we're heading? Oh, hell yeah. Like, the, the problem a lot of people don't understand is how long it actually takes to change engines. Um, yes. because so even though Wicked Witch had like, this is like their fourth game or something, every single one of them has had to change engine, like the, had the Wii one, then it changed engines for the live two, then it changed engines for Evo. And then Evo changed engines again to unreal for, um, Evo two. And a big misconception is a lot of people think unreal was changed halfway through development. No, it was always going to be in unreal. It was always developed in unreal. Uh, the problem was. Because there were so many unknowns about Unreal, it did take a lot longer to get it across to the new engine than previously thought. Um, so now my biggest thing is the next game, they don't have to change engines. They can focus 100% on improving everything else in the game. Like this one, obviously, we did a bunch of improvements while we were moving it across. But if more than half of the time spent is changing engines, that's like half that is untapped creativity slash energy that's going to be used to make a better game so if this one's like you know 300 percent better than the last one 
the next one's like a thousand percent better. You know what I mean? So there's a lot more that can be done now that we're at this point. So I'm really happy with um, where it's all going. That's very true. That's good to hear and very reassuring. And it's people, um, especially because it's like a younger demographic, are probably going to be buying this game. But like, there's unrealistic rec- uh, expectations around like, oh, I want a fully in-depth, unlimited season career mode from from game one. And obviously, in the first rendition of the game or first edition of the game, rather, you're not going to get that. But if you get a third or fourth or fifth game, you, you can get um, you know a pretty pretty good result. Um, I also want to ask you, I watched your trailer breakdown and you talked about that Marley and Pickett spin um, and I noticed that, uh, or you mentioned it in the video rather, you got him to spin around uh, Nick Haynes and in the background you can see the score is at the right p- time. Um, tell us about how hard that was to actually do. Ooh. I mean, it wasn't hard to do. Um, it wasn't? It wasn't hard to do. Uh, that might be giving away something. Um, well, basically, kind of in the, in the game day mode, we sort of spoke about it anyway. Um, like, you can now set a custom score line to start your match. Oh, cool. Um, so, you, and a custom start time. But for me, it was, like, in the past, I've kind of had to do that stuff myself and really be like, oh, I'm playing the match to this point and then getting that moment. Um, yes. But, yeah, it's just, like, attention to detail like that that not everyone will pick up on. So sometimes I do point them out to people because I'm like, look at this cool thing I did and appreciate that it was cool. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I feel like if you do things like that, it really shows people that you actually care than just like same with the fact that the Liam Ryan, like Mark of the Year was in there um, yep. because otherwise they're just like, oh, it's just, you know, someone making a trailer for a game. But there are people that genuinely care about footy there. I think that's something that people spread a lot is that there's not. So um, yeah. I'm always pushing to do all of the cool things that people will understand and get because it just shows you give a damn that's cool mate did you did you do the dom sheed goal because i remember they did a recreation preview snippet of sheed kicking a goal from the boundary was that you as well that was me as well that was a lot more work uh to do that oh yeah because i had to work out there was there was so many other things i had to work out at the time i don't think the feature was in at that point or maybe it was but i needed to i wanted to get the time right on the scoreboard that was the biggest challenge wow was getting yes. the time right. So I had to get someone to hack in something where it started at like the 27 minute mark. And then I was like, all right, I've got like 30 seconds to get the ball down there and like get a set shot from that position. And then sometimes the wind would be terrible. I reckon I took that kick like a hundred times. And then the first time I got it, then I don't know, there was something else wrong with it. And then I got it like the second time straight away. And I was like, why did it take me 100 times <laughs> to get it like six times in a row? So or if I would stuff up the set shot, which was also another thing. Um, but yeah, like again, just trying to get attention to detail, like the scoreboard, obviously if it was like zero to zero, people were like, well, this is dumb. So Yeah, sure. sure. Um, oh, nice one. I don't know whether anyone else would have put that much effort in at the studio, but I was like, I'm happy to do it because I oh, want to show the cool things off. It was cool. I think a lot of people got around it. Um, there's a cool picture on your Instagram I found of um, you and Shane Mumford and Mumford's towering over.